All right, Chris, man. So what's going on, man? What, what do you want me to? What do you want me to call you, man? You want me to call you? Uh, you you want me to call you Chris? You want me to call you Steeper? You want me to call you Chaplin? What, what do you want me to call you? Hey, you? You call me whatever you want to call me. Just don't call me late for dinner. You know what I'm saying? You say don't call you late for dinner, man. Let's go ahead and get this started, man. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get this started. So you say Chris is fine? Yeah, Chris is fine or Streets, whatever. Uh, it don't matter. Okay, Streets, Chris. All right. What's going on, y'all? It's locked out, man, and I am back again. I hope you guys had a had a pretty good weekend. I know I did. I know I did. I had a. It was it was okay. It was okay. When you get to spend time with the family. It is always okay. Well, I am back today with another podcast interview for you guys. And uh, this gentleman reached out to me. It was like, yo, I, I, I got something to say. I got a story to tell. I was like, really? Well, let's get on and talk about it. This man, let's see. Let's see. He's out of uh, he's out of Texas. He's a military veteran. He's a family man. Been in the game for uh, for a good minute, and he's also a man of God. That's what's up. I am me personally. I am a man of God, but this is a man of God, and he's gonna come on and talk all about it. So let me go ahead and switch me in right quick. You guys see my face right here. Y'all see what's up. What's going on, y'all? Again, if you guys like what you see or hear, definitely, definitely, hold on for a second, definitely subscribe, like, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and I am here to bring to the show... Mr. Uh, I like beating up people's names, man. Mr. Chris Steep Strepper. What's going on, brother, man? What's up? It's, it's pronounced Streeper. It ain't a big deal. Oh, Streeper. So, see, I see. I beat yeah. I, I beat people's names up like 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 Ali when when Ali's in the ring and and he's he's doing the rope a dope knocking knocking brothers out. That, that's what I do with people's names. I I, I do exactly but, that. <laughs> it's all it's all good, homie. You see, guess like when I was in elementary school, my bus driver used to pick on my name mm -hmm. because Streeper. I grew up in Southeast Texas, and Streeper in Spanish means dancer, but you know, not the kind of good dancer, the nighttime dancer. You know what I'm saying? So oh, the night, the I've nighttime. Heard it all my dancer. life. Oh, okay, the okay. nighttime dancer. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, you can call me Chris, you can call me Streeper, you can call me Chaplin Screech, Screech, you can call me whatever you want, just don't call me late for dinner lockout. That's what's up, man, that's what's up. I definitely won't do that, man. Well, for everybody that's uh, that's listening and watching, man, why don't you go ahead and tell a little bit about yourself very quick. Oh, well, I don't know, it's whatever you want to know, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm a reefer driver right now. The long, the long, short, skinny story of that is... Uh, Man, I I got into the service uh, right before 9/11. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a uh, small refinery town in southeast Texas, and basically the only options down there were you go in the military, you go work at the refinery, or you go work at the paper mill. And uh, my old man and my grandpa, my great grandpa, they all worked at the refinery. And I didn't want to do that. Oh, okay. I tried the college thing, and it wasn't for me. So I joined the service, and. Uh, I did that when I got out. I had a few odds and ends jobs. You know, nothing really felt right. Okay. Uh, okay. And then I, I tried to go back out on the water on a tugboat. Worked mm -hmm. on the Gulf of Mexico for a while on a tugboat. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mama, my old lady, you know, she was she didn't like me being gone too much. And I said, well, you know, I really kind of like always wanted to drive a truck. Okay. And everybody tried to talk me out of it. So. So you said so said, you so if you, I'm gonna have another job, that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> so you said bump you said bump what everybody else say. I'm about to I'm about to go ahead and uh and do this truck thing. Yeah, man, you know, I tried I tried, you know, doing stuff for other people. I put a lot of other people in front of me a few times and 
you know, I went to college because my old man was like, hey, you need to go to college. And, you know, I, I tried that. And, I, I, man, I made really bad grades. I wasn't a good student. I was a good college guy, uh, but I was not a good student. Well, you, uh, you know, I, I guess, I, I guess we try to for, for our, our, our sons or you know for our kids in general, you know, being a parent that's coming up, you know, from from the sixties, from the eighties, from the nineties, you know what I'm saying? You know what we went through? You know, times back then was like was like easy for us you know we can we can jump from factory to factory job to job i mean my mom's my mom's been uh rocking out you know factory you know factory work 30 years before you know before she was forced into retirement so you know as i looked at that as a kid you know as a kid coming up you know like you I, you know, college wasn't on my mind, you know, at that time it was, it was, it was making money. It was, it was trying to make money, trying to get rich, trying to do the get rich quit schemes and all like that. So I've pretty much been, you know, been a hustler, but for my kid, you know, I was instilling, yo, you need to go to college if you want to, you know, you want to be great at something. And, and lo and behold, my son did go to college and he will be graduating this month. Well, he would have been walking across the stage, but you know, coronavirus pretty much scrapped all the that. The whole COVID thing yeah, shut it down. That, huh? Yeah, yeah, that that pretty much I I was man, I was gunning for this year. This this 2020 was my year, man. I want I was gonna be right there in the front row. My son kept telling me, like, Dad, you're not gonna be in the front row. I'm like, dude. I'm going to be in the front row. I, I don't care who's up there. I'm going to be there. But, of course, COVID-19 came in and said, you ain't going to be nowhere. So, but as, of yeah. right, but as of right now, as I, as, as I see, you know, as I see and as I'm looking back at it, to be honest with you, to be totally honest with you, I, I, now that I feel that, college is setting kids up for failure already especially let, let me let me say let let me let me explain that um wonder why i say that is because of unfortunately I, i'm not a rich kid i mean you know i'm not a rich dad you know what i'm saying i did what i could to get my son there financially you know what i'm saying we're you know we're you know we're you know working check to check uh trying to make sure that they got a roof over their heads uh you know food in their bodies you know clothes on their backs even though my son is a grown man but still i'm i'm still doing that because you know he's going to school and of course his options of work is limited you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so as i you know as i try to help him financially we had to go to get grants we had to go and get loans we had to go and and figure out whatever whatever possible way to get him through college now unfortunately you know he didn't get a he didn't get a scholarship you know what i'm saying so of course he didn't get a scholarship he's not a football player he's not a basketball player you know he's not a band guy you know he's just your average kid from you know from the neighborhood that's trying to come up mm -hmm. and as i look back at it you know with all of the college loans that we took out throughout the years we got to pay that back man you know yeah. we we, we got to pay that back and being that we got to pay that back it's it's no guarantee that he's going to get in the field that he went to college for you know a lot of kids had went to college for certain fields and unfortunately they had to go into a different field in order to make ends meet and then now they now they stuck with college loans that they got to pay back you know throughout the rest of their you know the rest of their lives or whatever the case so that's why i said that i feel that college 
is setting kids up for failure because they're already they're already in the negative when they come out of when they come out of school. No, I would agree with that. Um, so that's actually how I kind of moved into driving truck. Um, you know, I was I was really fortunate. Like I told you, I went to college and I dropped out a couple of times before I got in the service. Mm-hmm. When I came out, I did I did ten years in the military and then I did another two years in the reserves. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I got out, my wife actually encouraged me to use my GI Bill to finish college. Okay. And when I, you know, when I came out, I was much more disciplined. I was a lot, I, I, I hesitate to use the word wiser, but I was a little bit more wise to the ways of the world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did finish college. And I, as a matter of fact, I, I got a bachelor's degree in applied sciences and I went on and got a master's degree in education. And actually I became a high school teacher in Pasadena, Texas. Okay. okay. And other than truck driving in the military, that was probably my, my, next favorite job that I've had but when I moved up to Ohio there was issues with me getting my license transferred from Texas up to the Ohio area I was a social studies teacher I taught history political science and economics okay and there wasn't any social studies jobs available for me when I came up here so I had to make ends meet I had to think about well what was I going to do and with no options and trying to substitute teach for 70 bucks a day, that wasn't going to cut it. You know, that's a sporadic kind of gig. Wait, I told my wife, sub- I, you know, wait I substitute. Like, I'm, I'm done. I'm tired. Substitute teachers made only $70 a day? Depends on what district you were at. Uh, you know, outside of the, the Cuyahoga County area, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it's 70, 80, 90 bucks a day, depending on the district. If you go into Cuyahoga County, it might be 100, 110. But those jobs are hit and miss. They're not able available every single day. Okay. You know, they might need a teacher two days this week, one day next week, half a day at this school, half a day at this school on the other side of the, the you know, the county. I could be on the east side in Monday, you know, Monday morning and for half a morning, and then down in Mansfield for the afternoon. Wow. You know, and make a hundred and ten dollars. Wow. And not make anything else for the rest of the week. So that's is kind of where where I was like, you know what, I'm going to do something that I that I love. I'm going to do something I've always wanted to do, and I'm going to get something that's stable. That mm-hmm. if I if I happen to move again, that I'm not going to have to worry about licenses or registrations or not making money. I'm going to get something that's stable. That I have a trade. That I have a skill uh, that's not going away. And like I said. Back in the day when I was in college, I drove Class C for a construction company and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go get that big gal license. And I went and got my Class A. So, and I love it. So would how? Never, would never change it. But I, I have a master's degree that I don't use. Wow. I'm blessed enough the fact that I paid for it on a GI Bill. I'm not slave to debt like a lot of people are. Of course. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't use my degree. And see, and now, as I as I said before, you you're in a totally different industry than what you actually went to school for. And see, that's what I'm kind of hoping that that it does that doesn't happen to my son because, like I said, when he comes out, he got his he got his BA in um, in media. So he, you know, he at least he got a degree that he can flip flop from you know either doing engineering you know sound in en- sound engineering or doing something at a radio station or doing something at a at a at a tv station you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. or he could pretty much do stuff on his own you know what i'm saying but like i said before is is lightweight tough because there's there's limited and it's and it's always the case, you know. I, as much as I love Cleveland, you know, Cleveland is my home. Two one six Ohio. It's just unfortunate that in order to make it, you you always have to end up moving out of the city that you're in in order to, you yep. know, make it a little bit. And I I'll throw something at you too. And if you want to talk online later on, 
mm-hmm. you know, your son can always look at uh, maybe joining the military and putting those skills to use uh, in the military. You know, they have public affairs officers and people that do graphic design and help with the recruiting and help with the media channels and the reporting and things like that. And they'll help pay off that college debt. Okay, I'll sit, I'll, I'll slide so, that over to him. So growing up in Southeast yeah. Texas, man, you know, Southeast Texas, that's 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 my that's my spot, man. I shout out to Texas, man. A lot of, you know, I I love me some Texas. You know what I'm saying? Even though I won't be down there for a couple of years, y'all. I'll be back. I'll be back down there. Just just just, just chill. I, right now I'm up in the in the Midwest and I got to do my Midwest swing up here. But uh how how was it growing up in uh, Southeast Texas, man? You know, it, it was weird. You know, I grew up during the 80s and the, the early 90s. Uh, I grew up in, in right outside of the town of Beaumont, the Beaumont, Port Arthur, Orange area. Exactly. I'm uh, familiar with Beaumont. The, yeah, they call it the Golden Triangle. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of culture down there. It, it's, it's really probably the big melting pot in Texas. Uh, okay. The town I was at was founded as an oil boom town in 1900. So everybody and their mama come down there to get rich. Mm-hmm. Uh, Exxon Mobil has its biggest domestic refinery down there. Of, of Almost course. got a major military port. Um, you know, you've got the Houston Ship Channel not too far away. Mm-hmm. You're right across the, the river from Louisiana. So you had... All kinds of music, all kinds of food, all kinds of culture, just mixing. And, you know, sometimes it was good, sometimes it wasn't. Uh, you know, there there was issues down there with with race and class and everything. You know, right. it was you know kind of a weird thing. But you know, my old man didn't put up with that stuff, and you know that was kind of cool. But uh, right. man, I really enjoyed it. I miss it. It's it'll always be home. Uh, so you, so you started every, so you pretty much you you started everything while you was down in Texas. It says here you was uh, you was a uh, tugboat, motorcycle mechanic. You of course you a teacher, uh, volunteer firefighter, and trucking. So you you pretty yeah. much started that all down in Texas. So would you know to fast forward to trucking, where where did you 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 got your uh, CDLs while you was in the service, am I right, or did you go no, to school I, for that? I got my CDL when I got out when I moved up here to Ohio. It was uh, 2015, mm-hmm. late 2015, so early 2016. I got my CDL. Uh, I went to Hamburg Truck School down in the uh, down in Madonna. Okay, yeah, I'm familiar with them. I'm familiar with them. Hamburg, yeah. uh, Great a lot of, Lakes. A lot of people in the area go there or Great yeah. Lakes. Uh, and then my and then of course my school, which is Tri C. So Tri C and Great yeah. Lakes always had a had a had a camaraderie going with each other though, because everybody would come up. Everybody you know that I come in contact with, like yo. So what school you went to? I, I went to Tri C. Oh man, I, I I went to uh I went to Great Lakes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you got your CDLs, right? So, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but yeah, it's still a great school, though. Uh, great Lakes and Hammer. They're they're both uh great schools. Uh, did you did you come did did you come out of pocket for your for your CDLs or did you um or did you? Uh, no, I I had just enough left on my gi bill that, oh, uh, the cover they, for paid, that. they paid my gi bill okay that's what's uh, up that's what's up congratulations on that man that you didn't have to come out the yeah. pocket so uh, i i bled that gi bill thing dry <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up yeah i i came out of the pocket on mine it was uh 50 5600 yeah, I I I blow yeah. I I blew a credit card on that, which now I'm you know paying back through bankruptcy. But but um but yeah, I figure I figure if I was gonna go broke, you know what I'm saying, and I'm in credit card debt, you know finances is you know dwindling and all like that. My my company is still trying to be I mean trying to be afloat, but you got more people that's coming into that particular industry taking money away from me and all like that i was like look okay let me i went in there one one day i had a i had a tire change that was near the school 
Well, was that a tire change or a lockout? I'm I'm not sure, but you know, it was one of the it was one of the it was one of the two. And I seen the truck in the driveway and I thought the person that I was going to, you know, I thought that, you know, that there was that that was their truck, but the young lady said that was her mother's truck. And I was like, Your mother? It was like a female? She was like, Yeah, yeah. I was like, Okay. So we started talking about her moms and you know, her moms was like 45 years old or I think she was like 45 46 or something like that at the time I was 45 and I was like huh she could do it I can do it so I after I after I did the service drove right down the street to the uh to uh try to see went in there talked to the lady I had the credit card on me. I was like, look, go ahead and do it before I change my mind and everything else is history. <laughs> <laughs> so what brought you up to Ohio, bro? Do what? What brought you up to Ohio? So my wife is actually still on active duty in the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. uh, she is finishing up her 19th year, getting ready to retire. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, really, really proud of her. Really proud of her. All we right. met when we were stationed together a long time ago, and uh, you know, I kind of like being married to her, so I figured I'd come on along for the ride. You know. Okay, that's what's up. Now you know what I I, yeah. I, I talked to I talked to a few people that's that's that that's done the military. They actually now let me ask you this. I you know some people call it double dipping, but she she put in twenty years with the service right so she's retired from the cert or retiring from the service and she got all her benefits her her medical is her medical is done her medical he, you get sick you, you her medical what a, her medical is 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 right there whenever she needs it now if she wants to she could put in another maybe 15 to 20 years somewhere else and retire from that too and get you know get the best of both worlds it's is is she gonna go ahead and ride out her military retirement or is, do she got plans to make the jump into something else and and retire from there? you know we we've we've kind of been having that conversation about what she wants to be when she grows up and uh she hadn't decided but we we just had a new baby uh, okay. Last year, so my my youngest is now just right at a year and a half. Okay. And you know we have four other kids; they're all teenagers. Okay. And she kind of just wants to be a house mom. Okay. And you know I I've, I've been in the, the truck game long enough now that you know I make pretty decent living mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a military retirement check. You know we can we can probably do okay. And hopefully I'm able to give that to her. That's what I'd like to do. Okay. Is just give her the time off and let her hang out and sit and relax at the house and just be mama for a bit. Okay. That's uh, what's up. If she wants to go back to work, she might. She's kind of looking at some different options. All right. So twenty. So twenty fifteen. So you and your you wait you 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 started driving in twenty fifteen or. 2016. 2016. So right now you in your first fourth year of driving. Yeah, roughly. All right. So uh, of course you of of course you you know started out at at the bottom. So take me through take me through your rookie years. Who who you who gave you the opportunity and what was your experience with them? <laughs> well, I'm not going to bad mouth their name, uh, but it was not a very pleasant experience. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and I, I'm kind of like you. I don't like to just broadcast out who I do and have worked for. Exactly. Uh, but my 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 first year was was not very pleasant. Just like a lot of drivers. Yeah, the first uh, year, first year I is always. For a, yeah, and, and I didn't I didn't go work for a mega. I wasn't working for like a Swift or a Rail or a, 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 a Knight or anybody. I worked for a smaller family owned regional carrier uh based out of northeast ohio okay and they only had like 20 trucks i had I happened to meet the guy he had come to the school on a recruiting visit and we just kind of hit it off and we're, we're talking he says hey why don't you come work for me and normally they didn't hire 
out of the school, but they were starting to look at hiring student drivers. Okay. Uh, that was one of the first few that they took. And they put me in the chunkiest, nastiest, broke down truck. Um, uh, you know, I was broke down half the time. Yeah, I remember one the one the 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 knob on the stick broke off. Wow! And I was going down. A, yeah, I was going down Blue Mountain, and I had to pull what? over. What? And I'm not. I do look. I'm not even kidding you. Like, so I'm pretty mechanically inclined. I had to break down all the plastic hangers I had on my in my hanger mm -hmm. rack mm -hmm. and snap them all. And I made a duct tape and hanger splint on my stick shift to get it down to the TA so I could get it started. <laughs> wow. So you had, you had to MacGyver that, that thing. Yeah, I did. It, you know, I, I turned a million miles on it. It was a really, really old truck. Um, but, you know, the, the, the money wasn't what they promised me. The, uh, the, the home time wasn't what they promised me. The, it, it, just, it was a lot, of, a lot of talk and not a lot of action and follow through. And this, uh, and that's you know, unfortunate. And I, and I stuck it out for a while. That's that's unfortunate that some recruiters, uh, you know, I, I I'm not going to try and bad mouth the recruiters because you know I, you know, it is it is what it is with with the recruiters, man. You know they they have a job. That job is to get you with that company, to get you in that truck, to get you in that seat by any means necessary so whether they could say one thing and then you'll turn around and find out there's a different thing oh you gotta you you get a you get a 2017 you got a 2017 2018 2019 you'll get a 2019 cool but you end up in the 2015 oh we got uh you got inverters you got uh refrigerators you got this that and the other cool you get in that truck none of that in there and the inverter you gotta pay yeah, that's about you, got, it. you you gotta pay for the inverter yourself oh oh the yeah, money pay them to wire it up for you yeah yeah the, <laughs> the money the the money you know the money you can you can make uh uh 47 48 49 50 cent you get in there and your base and this is and this is what i want to make sure that everybody understands you got to understand the base pay of CPM. All right, cent per mile. The base pay that these recruiters be offering is mixed in with the incentives. So they'll come out and say, oh, yeah, you get 50 cent a mile. You'll get 55 cent a mile. But then when you come in, your base pay is like 38 cent a mile, 40 cent a mile. You see what I'm saying? So it, it is what it is with with recruiters, and you just gotta, you know, you just gotta, you know, just just gotta just gotta feel yeah. them out. That's that's all. That's you all. know, every, everybody in the industry does a part, but like you say, you know, re recruiters, they their job is to put meat in the seat. You know, mm -hmm. guys talk bad about brokers. Their the broker's job is to get a load from point A to point B and, and they, exactly. as cheap as possible. You know, and that's that's what it is. And, and drivers they they want to gripe about it and fuss about it, but that's their role in the game. That's what they do. Their job is to find somebody that's going to take this from A to B for as cheap as possible, so they can make some money, and so the person that needs to ship it can make some money. That's what it is. And exactly. the, the recruiters the same way. Their job is to put meat in the seat. They don't care. And 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 the unfortunate truth is. The bigger companies can afford the turnover. They can mm -hmm. afford to do what they need to do to get it in there because the odds are you're not going to stay longer than six months anyway. Well, they figure they they figure that oh. uh, you know I always figured for every every one driver that they got working there, they got ten drivers in the wings waiting to get in that seat. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and and CDL schools. I mean, obviously not right now because of the COVID thing, but mm -hmm. CEO schools can crank out a fresh batch of students every once a month. week. Yep. You know, and and how many CDL schools are there across the country? 
a I mean, lot. There's, what there's five just in our area. You it's, know, I only live thirty miles from you. There's exactly. five in our area. Yep, you cranking got, out thirty kids every month. That's hundred and fifty students every month. You looking got, for the same jobs we're looking for. You got you got his school, Hamrick. You got my school, uh, Tri C. Then there's Great Lakes. Uh, yeah, road masters one up on the east side yeah road master in in columbus which road master is owned by uh warner by the way uh and then yeah, there's, oh, i'm not even talking about down in columbus i just mean in the cleveland akron area mm-hmm. there's four or five schools think mm-hmm. about that and you got into and don't forget that don't forget the independence you know what I'm saying? Don't forget the independence. Oh, yeah. You know, all you got to do is go on, go on Craigslist and see if somebody can, you know, loan you a truck. And, you know, that's basically is about it. Because when you go to take the test, you know, now my school is is all self in, self-contained self now. But before we we had to go and take the test with another, you know, with another uh, another company in order to get our, you know, pass for our CDLs. But I had to do the same thing. I had to go to an off site testing location. Yeah, to get uh to get our you know, to get passed for our CDLs. Luckily I got mine on the second go around. I was so damn happy when I passed all my past the uh skills tests and uh and the pre trip. I was like happy as a two dollar bill and then I get on the road Come around that first channel turn, and the motherfucking <laughs> the motherfucking trailer wheel went up on the fucking curve. I was like, "Ain't this a bitch?" Well, I want you to go up to this school right here, turn around, and go back. I was like, "Well, wait, 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 can we?" Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, just come back next week. I was like, "Okay, I'll be back next week." So. But uh, but yeah, man, it's 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 crazy how how uh how how the recruiters and everything that they teach they train you or teach you or tell you my fault tra- train you God damn it man, um they tell you about the company and how good the company is, but that's their job. Their their job is to upsell the company, pretty much. You know, it's your job to get in there and figure out whether that company is good for you. So. Yeah. But you said so unfortunately. Yeah, any, oh, go ahead. Anytime I anytime I talk to a younger driver or, you know, I, I swing into school every now and again just to you know, say hey to people and mm-hmm. um to whatnot. But you know, like you and me hooked up on C D L Life. Mm-hmm. Uh people will reach out to me, hey Chaplin Screech, you know, what do you think about such and such? And we'll we'll have a dialogue. But I tell them the same thing. Listen, research it. Make exactly. sure it's a fit for you. Make sure it's going to pay you the money you need. Make sure it's going to give you the home time you need. Look at the CSA score. Look at feedback. Look at reviews. Look at Indeed. Look at Glassdoor. Look, I mean, there is so much information out there about these companies now. You know, reach it. Throw it out there to people. Hey, anybody drove for this company? Mm-hmm. You know, and see what they say. Exactly. And, and and make a judgment. Ask them to take you on a tour to place if you live local. That's one of the things I did with the company I'm with now. You know, I say, hey, can I come up and see your shop? Can I see your trucks? Can I just visit with you for a little bit? And they say, yeah. Okay. See, that's something. This, and see, right here, this is something that a lot of people don't even know about. That you can, that you can go and call up the company, especially if you're local or local regional. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, call them up and say, hey, you know, I know I could fill out the application online and all like that. But before I go through all of that, can I just come up to can I just come up to the place and just take a walk around, see what kind of trucks I'm getting into, see what see what type of environment that I'm about to that I'm about to get into. Nope. You know, I, I don't think they nope. I, I don't think they want to say I don't you're a potential driver. They looking for drivers. I don't think they're going to say no. That will probably yep. that will probably be something good that uh, that they might like, you know, something different. I mean, you know, when you hit a recruiter with something different, they'll you know they'll be like, whoa, man, I ain't I ain't expect that. So give them yeah, some. Even if it, you know, if, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, like even if, like if if you're looking, you're you're right out of school, right? Mm-hmm. And you're looking at a bigger carrier, right? And it just I'll use Melton for an example. Uh, Melton has a facility up close to Youngstown, mm-hmm. right? And I, you know, I drove flatbed for a while, and I was looking at Melton, and I asked them, "Hey, can I come up and visit your facility?" And they told me no. Well, okay. Wow. Well, you know, 
just yeah. Well, why do I want to come work? What do you What do you not want me to see? What What are you I hiding? Making the jump this last time, uh, I got I got uh, you know looking back in uh, November. So I've been with this company that I'm with now since December, mm-hmm. and you know hopefully I'm gonna retire here. That's how happy I am. That's you know that's what that's what's up. That's that's the thing right there is what we're trying to look for a company that we can but, retire uh, from. You know, what I did is they they are about five miles from where I live, and mm-hmm. there was, the, and like I told you, I'm a reefer driver. I'd never driven reefer before. Mm-hmm. But my wife said, hey, check them out. That They have a really good reputation. So I looked at them, and I looked at a flatbed carrier. They are literally both five miles from my house. Okay. And I called them both. Hey, could I come see the place? Hey, could I come visit with you? Hey, could I come see the truck? And I went around to the flatbed place. And again, I'm not going to name its name, right, but right. Uh, man, I walked away from it, and it, it the trucks didn't look good, the yard didn't look good, the trailers looked bad. I kind of just got a sketchy feeling about it, and you know how it is. Like you come up a certain way. You just- I went to this went to this other place and I was just blown away. Let me let so. me let me ask you this right quick. Um being that being that local mom and pops uh 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 trucking companies that has uh, you know maybe about 100 200 trucks but they're not all uh, they're not all how how can I say? They're not. They're not all uh, good equipment. All right. Let's say the equipment is not even brand new. Let's say they 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 the 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 latest trucks, the latest trucks that they that they get in is like twenty sixteens. That's brand new to them. You know, it's twenty twenty. All right. So, in your opinion, could you tolerate driving, you know, a truck that's, you know, that's that's late of a model if the money was good? I am in a 2015 Freightliner right now driving down the highway as we speak. Mhm. So, it is the nicest truck I have ever driven for any company. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It has all the bells and whistles, the leather, the wood grain, all of it. But I'm in it because the company I'm with takes really good care of their equipment. They have pride in their trucks, and they maintain them well. And that was one of the things I looked at when I went to these companies. I wanted to see what their mechanic shop looked like. And I was a mechanic for a while. I turned a lot of wrenches. I could see things that maybe, you know, a neophyte driver is not going to see. Well, okay, that's. I wanted up. to see what did their what was their board schedule on there for the A's, B's, and C services. You know, what was the mileage like? You know, what okay. what was I looking at? You know, okay. I don't mind driving an old truck, especially if the money's good. Okay, that's what's so up. It's how well does the company want to maintain their equipment? And I got to I got to admit the the I I got to admit my, you know the company the company they they do take care of their trucks. I got to admit the money's good too, but they also take care of their trucks, but unfortunately the 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 equipment is older equipment. You know, they you know the the latest is maybe a 2015 2016 2017 internationals. Nothing else nothing else new um my my guy jason uh just recently talked to a potential driver that's that was thinking well no that was wanting to come in but when he told him that the equipment you know that we had older equipment over here he decided you know that that wasn't for him because you know he wants to drive a brand new spanking brand new truck and that's quite as kept. That's what I thought I was getting into. I thought I was getting into a brand uh, spanking brand new truck too. But you know, I'm driving a 2016. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, I'll, I'll say this about trucks and drivers. Mm-hmm. You know, 
especially if you're a new driver. Don't expect nothing. End of story. Don't expect nothing. Be happy and be be thankful for what you're blessed to get. If you're an experienced driver and you want to turn your nose up at an opportunity because of the equipment, that's on you. If you feel you deserve a brand new 2020 truck, okay, prove it. Okay. You know, okay. but what are you willing to give up for it? Are you willing to give up a little bit of cash to drive a brand new truck? Because that's really what it's going to come down to. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I make good money. I drive a little older truck. My company just ordered three trucks. We got uh, three on order. I think they're coming into the summertime, but I won't get one. <laughs> My truck's going to get retired at the end of the summer, and I'm going to go into somebody else's truck. Exactly. You know, that's going to get fleeted up into the new one. Exactly. And you know what? That's cool. I'm fine with it. But guess what? By the next, by the time that truck gets retired, it's going to be my time. I will have paid my due, and I'm going to be getting that new truck. Exactly. So it might be 2023 or 2024, you but gotta, I will get a new one eventually. All you got to do is just uh, stay patient and wait your time, man. All right, so let's yeah, uh. Them new ones got all that that the beeps and bells and whistles and doodads and stuff. I don't like so. I, I like you. this one. I got you. <laughs> all right, so let's uh let's switch over, man. Uh, you you do have a you do have a video here. Let's see, you do have a video here, uh, that uh that changed your life. Let's uh let's listen in to what you got to say Hello. on that. For real. Okay. To think that he could come and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the masses. And uh, well, I'll tell you that that authority comes from, from God himself. But uh, in that, I want to share with you my testimony. So we're going to sit back, we're going to enjoy a pipe and a morning coffee. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself. Mr. Bit Pipe Smoker right there. So... <laughs> Chaplain's Creek, my real name is Chris Streeper. I grew up in uh, the north end of Beaumont, Texas. My uh, So let's uh let's talk about it. You you're you you're a bit man of God. Uh this is your testimony. Um uh, what got what what got you there, man? Uh what what, what got you there? <laughs> me being dumb. That's what got me there. Uh you know, I I've done a whole 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 bunch of stupid in my life, man. Uh, by the time I was 24 years old, there I give you the, the quick, short, skinny. But by the time I was 24 years old, I was uh, I was a functional alcoholic and I was a pill addict. Uh, and, and I was active duty in the military at that time, so I mean, let that sink in. Mm -hmm. I hit it really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, by the time I uh, was getting out of the Coast Guard, I was divorced. I was, I, I man, I didn't have anything. I, I literally, I had a duffel bag full of clothes, my Harley, some tools, and a mattress and a Bible. That's it. I moved into a, a, a I, it wasn't a halfway house, but it was more like a, a short-term living, you know, kind of place. A friend of mine knew uh, that had, uh, in Arizona, I had just known him mm -hmm. through riding bikes, and he was like, "Man, come stay with me." Um, and the only really marketable skill I had at that point was turning a wrench and beating people up. Mm -hmm. uh, so I I started a little chop shop with some guys mm -hmm. building bikes. Uh, some of them legitimate, some of them not legitimate, and for my real cash i bounced in a strip club and an irish pub mm -hmm. and i continued to do a lot of stupid in my life uh man one day i i had enough of it i didn't i knew something was wrong i i felt empty i felt lost i was angry all the time nothing was right you know i wasn't around my kids i wasn't around people that i knew i was miserable I thought about suicide a couple of times. Uh, once I really, I almost did it. I had the gun in my hand and just sat there. And I looked up and I saw the Bible that I had gotten when I was in the Coast Guard sitting on a shelf. And 
I just looked at it. I just kind of stared at it for a minute. I was like, Lord, there's got to be a better way. And I went to sleep. I got up the next day, and I grabbed that Bible, and I hopped on my Harley, and I rode up to this spot in Phoenix called South Mountain. And I, I literally had the Come to Jesus meeting, down on my knees, crying, screaming, cussing, fussing, hooting and hollering at the Lord, you know, why, why, why? And I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I said, you know, from here on out, I'm not going to live that way. I'm going to do what it says in this book. I'm going to live for you. Uh, this book says that you forgive my sins, that you can forgive me of the things that I've done, which is something I couldn't do for myself. Uh, you know, I, I would drink the pain away intentionally. And uh, I said, I'm going to trust in this book. I'm going to trust in this story. I'm going to trust that you are God made flesh here to save me. And uh, I'm going to do things your way from now on. That's so that was in uh, 2011, man. It was March 2011. You know, I, you know, I, I, I'm a man of faith. You know, I, I, I definitely believe in God and alone my life. I, you know, I, I have seen, I have seen things that, that was done to me that's, that only can be, that only can be explained by one person and one person only. And that's that's the Lord Jesus Christ, man. I mean, I, you know, there's some, you know, you always say to yourself that there's always somebody watching over you. And I, I'm a true, firm believer of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The same the same moments that you have when you went up to that uh, when you went up to that hill. It's the same moments that I have when I when I go and get on my hands and knees in the closet or in the bathroom. Yes, I said it. Bathroom. Shit. That's about the most quietest place that you're going to have, except unless you have a closet. But, you know, you, you're in that bathroom. Now, not bathroom that you're praying against that, uh, that porcelain. <laughs> the porcelain. I'm just talking about yeah. just get down. Just get down in the middle of the bathroom and just put your hands out and just have a and just have a just have that moment that's 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 what you need man and when you get and when you get that moment you'll feel it you you'll you literally dude man you'll you'll literally feel it washing all over you man <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yep so you, know, I, you get it, 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 you hit on a good point i want to say something about that it it doesn't matter where you do it what matters is that you do it mm -hmm. see when you, when you commune with god when you are praying with god that's what you're doing you're communing with him there will be a peace in your body you will physically feel it you will mentally feel it you will emotionally feel it and it doesn't matter if you're sitting on a toilet you're sitting in your car you're laying in the bunk in your truck you know or, or you're sitting at a, the, the the smoke pit at a truck stop if you are legitimately, truly, honestly communing with God and having that intentional relationship, you'll feel it. That's all He wants. He don't care where you do it. You and if you get and if you if you give yourself to Him and and everything, I, I always say God works in His time. You know what I'm saying? He's never there when you want Him to be, but He's there on time. You know, it's like it's like, damn. You know, it's like what Chris it's like what Chris just said. Why, why, why? Why this? Why is this happening to me? Why why is my financial messed up? Why is my why is my marriage on the rocks? Why why this? Why that? Why this? I don't want to be here no more. I mean, you know, I, I had the same moments that this man had. You know what I'm saying? Drinking, drinking the life away. That MD twenty twenty, I would go and grab a bottle and sit there, boom, boom, boom. Until one day, my son came downstairs and actually ripped the bottle away from me. I was in my truck, not not a CMV. I was in my personal truck, my Ford F-150. And I was drinking. He came outside, snatched the keys. Because he knew I was about to drive. I was about to take my ass down to the casino. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he snatched my keys, snatched the bottle, brought me in the house. 
And, you know, and that was my moment right there. That's why I said to this very day, my son is my rock. You know what I'm saying? You know, me and his moms just separated. You know, I was going through a thing. You know, I, I had money in the bank that I wasted that I wasted away. But uh, my son came through for me and God came through for me. He, you know, of course, he forgive my sins. And I just, you know, just try to make it try to make it better. Now, I, now I kind of fell off a little bit and God did t and, and God did show me that I did. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, you got you, you, you need a butt whooping sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You, you, you need you need a butt Look, whooping sometimes. You know, I, I didn't become, quote, like you'd like to put it, a man of God. I didn't become Chaplain Screech. You know, the, the day I got saved, man, it was, you know, March 2011, I was a totally different man than I am today. Mm -hmm. See, the, the Bible will tell you, just like an infant grows to a man, so does a baby Christian grow to be a mature Christian. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't know nothing about the faith other than I just gave my life to Christ. I, I didn't know how it worked. I didn't have nobody teaching me. I wasn't around people that were Christians. You know, I kind of had to figure some stuff out and just really start reading the Word. But, man, I, I tried to play let's make a deal with God. I tried to say, well, you know, I'll, I'm going to drink less or I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. If you do this, God, you know, God don't work that way. God wants you to love him and live for him, not make deals with him, not live for you and say you're going to do it for him. He wants you to live for him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, he whooped my butt for a few years before I started to get it halfway right. You know, right? So, so you uh, you you mentioned you know in our conversation that you was a a, orda a ordained minister. Am I, am I correct in saying that? I I am an ordained minister. Uh, I I don't really like that title. I don't feel like I'm worthy of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was I was ordained by the Southern Baptist Convention. Um, through a church that I worked with, um, but I am a, a chaplain. That's what I do. That's what, that's what I am. That's what God has called me to be. He's called me to be a chaplain and to be a teacher. So you, so, so you're able to, you're able to marry people. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Have you, have you married anybody yet or? I have only married a couple of people and they were, they were close friends of ours. Um, I'm actually supposed to perform a wedding in June if it happens. <laughs> okay. Now let me ask you this. Now, uh, now, now let me ask you this. I, uh, uh, I feel kind of funny asking this. All right. So please, 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 please do not take it the wrong way. But how do you, or do you? get paid i don't okay so you i don't want to okay okay because some minutes some some you know some churches men some ministry you know i i always i always try to think how do how do they get paid? Like, do they you know how do they get paid for what they for for what they do? Because I, it was this one guy, it was this one guy that I that I that I used to follow. I, I used to religiously follow him. Me, me and my me and my wife, we started. Uh, you know, he started he started at the old church. Um, fortunately, the congregation didn't like his style, so they pretty much locked the doors. And he took a couple of us to, you know, to continue to listen to the word that he was speaking. And then we got, you know, we got he he got um, he got uh, together with the school district and he started his ministry in, uh, in the school district. Um, uh, the school uh, Kennedy High School every every uh, every Sunday. It got bigger. It got bigger. It it filled to capacity every Sunday because because what he was speaking he wasn't like your at he he wasn't like a old school minister he was a new school he was a new school type of minister you know what I'm saying yeah the type of minister that didn't care how you come as long as you come you know what I'm saying you don't have to dress up you can dress down 
he he he'll talk to you like like he'll he'll have a conversation like me and you talking right now. That's how he'll talk to you. You know what I'm saying? He got bigger. You know, he moved into uh, he moved into a, a church that was in uh, Maple Heights. Well, actually, it was a theater, but you know, he brought the building, and then from there, you know, he moved uh, he moved the ministry to uh, Warrensville, and that's where I started to fall off because I was think I was feeling that. What he was doing was good. He just had the wrong people in his ear. And I just I, I just kind of he's still a good he's he's still a good pastor. He's still a good minister. But I just felt that the wrong people in his ear, it was like every Sunday now it was taught. He instead of talking the word. It was talking about the new businesses that he was popping up with. Well, we got the bookstore. Well, we got the chicken shack. Well, we got the we got the 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 daycare center. And it was like every week, every week, you know, of course, he'll come and do the tithes and the offerings and stuff like that. But, you know, and I guess what really what really turned me off at the point. Is when MTV did a did a Sweet Sixteen thing on his daughter, and um, and yeah, that 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 pretty much turned me off. Even though he came, even though he came back and he said that, of course, the wrong people was in his ear. You know, it, it still pretty much turned me off from that. So yeah, I, that happens with a lot of people where either legitimate hypocrisy or perceived hypocrisy will turn people off from the church. I mean, that happened to me when I was younger. So I understand that. Yeah, so that 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 that, that pretty much But no, me off, to but... answer your question, I don't I don't make any money doing my ministry. Um it's just, you know, it's a labor of love. It's something that the Lord's called me to. He sees fit to give me a job that keeps my family uh, with a roof over their head and with food in their bellies. So, all right, all right. So you, uh, so you started this. Uh, you started your YouTube channel. Uh, when when did you uh, when when did you started your YouTube channel? Because this is this is something this is something different. You know, you're you're a truck you're a truck last, driver. Last you, month, last month August. maybe maybe March. Oh. It's it's relatively new. Okay, okay. So, with your YouTube channel, man, what what are you trying to do with it? What what are you trying to get a uh, what, what are you trying to get across to uh, new jacks out I'm here? just trying to glorify God, man. That's it. Okay. You okay. know, uh, I've been watching. I'm like, you know, I'm like any trucker. You know, if I'm sitting around at the dock or you know, I got something not going on and I'm not reading or I'm not doing something, I you know, I flip on YouTube and I watch the trucking scene. I mean, that's that's actually how I found out about you was watching. Uh, makes the call, you know. I and by the way, I love those. I think those are awesome. So keep up with those. I but uh, I um, <laughs> you know, you, I, I really I, I got a lot of people in my ear. <laughs> I got a lot of people in my ear that's 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 telling me to to keep up with it. You know, it's just unfortunate that you know you know a uh, couple of things within the last couple of months have have changed for me dramatically. Thanks to you know, thanks to Almighty God, I, I'm I'm thinking about it right now. I just put it on hiatus right now, and I, yeah, I cool. you know, I, I'm I'm trying I'm you know, I'm, I, I'm trying to figure out some I'm trying to figure out some ways to keep it going. Like maybe have one of my subscribers uh, call in. We'll do a call in show. You know, maybe one of my subscribers will call. Uh, uh, call the company and ask them questions you know a particular subscriber that's interested in going with you know whatever company and they'll call them live on the show 
and then I'll do it that way. But, you know, as far as me calling, because, you know, I, of course I got popular, you know, just about. So what you're telling me is the jig is up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got the, the last uh, the last few calls I made, you know, they, they was familiar. They was familiar with me. It wasn't nothing bad about it. It wasn't nothing bad about it. But it's now, you know, they fam they're familiar with the show number now because I don't call them on my regular But their number. job is to put me in the waste the time with you. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, like I said, the jig is up. I get it. Exactly. So, but, but I, uh, you know, I'm, no, I mean, back to your question, mm -hmm. man. You know, I sit around, I watch that truck scene, and I mean, <laughs> man, tr truck YouTube is like a bunch of high school girls sometimes, man. There is like, there's some serious drama on the trucker YouTube space. And I, I would agree watch with it, you like, more. man. <laughs> you, know, I, you feel me? I couldn't but agree there, with there, you more. There is grown men acting like high school girls up on YouTube, and it, it may it, the sad part is it ain't funny. I know we're we're laughing about it, but it ain't funny. But I was watching it, and the deeper part of me was like, you know what? Ain't on here at all. Jesus. Ain't nobody talking about Jesus. There might have been somebody who says, hey, I'm a Christian and this is why my faith is important to me. And, you know, maybe they got one video on their channel here and there. And I was like, you know what? I felt something tugging on me to do something about that. And I prayed about it. And I talked to a couple friends about it. And they were like, why don't you do a YouTube channel and just for truckers? and do a Bible study, because I used to run a Bible study ministry, and I ran some other ministries, and they were like, why don't you do that for the YouTube? And I was like, okay, you know, and I prayed about it. And that's all I'm trying to do, man. I'm just trying to be a light in a dark spot and glorify God, and hopefully share Christ with, you know, my brother and sister drivers. You know, give them something good to look at instead of, you know, the drama and the childish behavior. You know, it, it, you know, not to say there's not good stuff out there, but there's a lot of drama. It's a lot of drama. I mean, a lot of drama amongst these uh, amongst these YouTube uh, airwaves, man. You got you you you. I I don't know, and I I tend to I tend to pride myself to stay away from all of that. You know what I'm saying? I, I pride myself to stay away from drama. Now, I I got into some controversies myself, you know, with a with a few YouTubers, but as as I tell as I tell my subscribers, as I tell my viewers, I'm 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 not I'm not about the drama, man. I mean, you know, if I I somebody somebody got their name got my name in their mouth and if I feel that if if it's not right, of course I'm going to come and 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 uh and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? But as far as as far as starting something or something like that, I mean, I, I try to keep that away. You know, I talked to, you know, I talked to one of uh one of my trucker friends and we was we just got finished watching a video from a uh, from trucker brown i believe uh on his alternative channel and she was like damn as much as, as much as we want to talk about it she was like nah we we going to stay away from that one she was like she was like we we, we going to stay we we going to stay away from that one because you know if we was we was at all we was like mouth open and like, bruh, like, what the hell? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of scrutiny. You know what I'm saying? But to be honest with yeah. you, though, and there's people on there I choose not to watch just because of the, either their attitude or their demeanor or their language. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I don't want to. You know, and don't don't take me wrong. Like I'm not no prude or nothing, right? I like I don't care if you drop a f bomb or whatever. You swore a couple times already. It don't bother me, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't I don't want to just fill my mind up with somebody yelling and hooting and hollering and cussing and, and, and being disgruntled. That's not something that that brings me joy. You know, I want to I want good positive things to come into my life. So so what? So so yeah. on this YouTube streets, man. What you know other other than me? Thank you very much. 
I give you the thumbs up for that. <laughs> but uh, who who else uh, who else out here that 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 you that you feel that that gives uh, positive vibes out here? Uh, I have a real good friend. He's actually my my good brother in Christ, um, Kenny Edwards, and he runs a channel called Home Over the Road. Mm-hmm. And he just kind of it, it's it's more like a video diary kind of a thing. Uh, but he just, he shares his life from a biblical Christ center perspective, you know, what it's like to be an over the road truck driver, the way that he does it from a Christian perspective. Um, man, I, I think that's just, it, it's awesome that he pours his heart into it. Um, we've met up a couple of times. We actually jokingly did a, a video together, just loving on each other, man. Just having a good time. Um, there's a cat from TMC. Um, I like his name it. Is Kevin. He, I like his thumbnails. Right Kev, you know who I'm talking about? Uh, no, I'm looking at a uh, home over the road right now. I, I like his thumbnails. Okay. Yeah, I like his thumbnails. But who who's the other guy you were saying now? Um, riding with Kev. He's a newer driver. He started driving back in I want to say November last year. But he works for TMC, and he's just kind of chronicled his experience day one. Uh, from going to orientation and getting his physical to now, um, you know, and ups and downs. And he just, he does a video a week and he just kind of talks about how his week went and uh, does a real good positive thing. And I, I love that because it, it's, it's such a great channel for somebody looking to get into the industry and actually seeing what a brand new baby driver is going through. Oh, okay, okay. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking at his channel right now. These guys right here. Uh, these guys right here. Uh, positive vibes, man. If you, if you definitely want to, you know, shoot my shoot my information over to him, my phone number and everything. Do that. I, I would okay. love to. I would love to talk to these drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then you know, there's other groups. I, man, like I said, I love what you do with the the make the calls. Anybody that's out there that's trying to help truckers. Man, that's what I'm about. Um, driven trucking is awesome. And I guess you notice, like, I used to be a flatbedder. These are all flatbed dudes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, Choice Mass, you know who he is? Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, I, 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 I rock with, uh, with Choice Mass. I, I know him on a, yeah, on a that, personal level. That dude's legit. Now, I ain't never got a chance to talk to him or visit with him, but that, that dude's legit, man. I like him. I like his style. That guy makes tarpon look like an art form. I mean, he's like a, a flatbed Picasso. And I just, I mean, positive vibes. Trucking with Tay, pro, dude. That's yeah, that trucking with Tay. The most positive dude. I love that guy. I've never got to talk to him on the phone. I would love to talk to him on the phone. I would love. You, you know, I something. sent out. I sent out a request to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he was. I think he was busy at the time, but I did a. Uh, I did a respond in the comments on his uh, video that he actually brought. You know, he brought his wife. You know, he his wife at home and all like that. And it was such. It was such a positive. Uh, yeah. Positive video. I, mean, I just. I love it, dude. And, and, and me and him have kind of tur- you know tore up some of the same grass. Where you know he's a, he's a college guy. He's a college graduate. And he chooses to truck for a living. You know, and he, and he's a family man. You know, me and him have a lot in common. You know, and it's just the, the positivity in his channel is so amazing. You know what? As we speak right now, uh, Choice Mass is live right now. Let's listen into what he what he got going on. <laughs> Oh my why I eat them things every time I eat them things. He's about to do one called the Executioner B. <laughs> sounds the like executioner he, me. Sounds like he got somebody in the Hold truck. Up. But yeah, this man right here stopped the, the clock. The other day. That's huge. Stop the clock, man. Yeah. This this my, really, this is my guy. Know. He's he's uh he's he's very inspirational. He's very inspirational. Uh I give it to Choice Mass. Because he he started a movement. He start he started a movement a couple of years ago called uh, Truckers Feeding the Homeless. Yeah. When he when he started that, I looked at him because you know, like I said, the you know the group that he's in the the stoop 
you know i you know i was i was in the stoop at one time you know is the stoop is is an inquired taste <laughs> it's the, the stoop is an inquired taste to to be a part of that uh to be a part of that camaraderie over there but but choice mass himself man you know with him and the guys over there came together to do for 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 the homeless you know i i i got i i gotta give them a bomb drop for that because you know they they came together they started something they started a movement now i talked to uh i talked to uh sunny rob one of the one of the members over there and um and at the time she wasn't sure that um that if the uh if the movement was going to continue this year because of what's going on. I talked to uh choice earlier this year, you know, about the movement before all this COVID thing went on. And then when I talked to Sonny Rob doing the COVID thing, they was, you know, they were still in the midst of either doing it or not doing it or something like that. But uh choice mass did come back on a, on a stop the clock live video and said that it's still going on. So, well, we, I guess That's we just cool. have to. I guess we just have to sit back and relax and see uh, about what's uh, what's the uh, feet, the truckers feet, and the homeless movement. If it's gonna if it's gonna move in in uh, Baltimore. All right, Chris, man. So, um, so your hobbies, man. Uh, your your hobbies. I see you you like motorcycles. You you uh, you're a pipe smoker and uh, weeding, huh? Smoking that big bin yeah. pipe, huh? <laughs> yeah i uh you know my my grandfather smoked a pipe mm -hmm. and i was real close to my grandfather when he passed away i had heard it his pipe set and uh yeah i just kind of picked it up i love it i fell in love with it i got a little collection at the house I like to I like to smoke good quality tobacco it's nice it's relaxing you know all right all right so so oh man so with all this said man what what what, what you what, what's what's for the future for uh for chaplain screech what's 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 for the future man i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I ain't promised tomorrow so who knows exactly I just, mean, just go as it goes hey, i mean if if i have my way i mean if that's what you're asking like if i have my way and my plan which you know, I, man, I would love to be able to buy my own rig one day and either, you know, lease on with the company that I'm with or uh, or venture out on my own and just, you know, keep doing what I do, man. You know, go out, meet drivers on the road, hand out some Bibles, preach, talk the word, love on people, feed them, you know, whatever. And, you know, watch my kiddos grow up and grow old with mama. You know, that's <laughs> my do, wife is my best friend. So. Do you so since you mentioned that, uh, since you mentioned that, because of what's going on right now with the with the fight between the brokers and and the owner operators and the independent contractors, this is 2020, man. Do you do you feel that this is the right time to 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 buy a truck, to lease a truck? To uh, yeah, I I personally wouldn't do it right now. No, no. I was looking at doing it back in the uh, the winter time, and I'm I'm so glad that I didn't pull the trigger on that decision. Uh, it's a bad time to do it right now. All, all the the friends of mine that I have that are owner ops and that are lease ops are struggling mm. uh, right now. It it is a bad time to be in that side of the industry. Um, you know, that is what it is. But we are a service driven industry, and right now you have a lot more capacity than we have freight. And anybody that knows basic capital economics and the laws of supply and demand, meaning when you have more ways to move a load than you do loads, they ain't going to pay out good. Especially when you got and a lot of basic math. Especially when you got a lot of drivers bidding, you know, chopping each other's head off to get that, to get that, to get that freight. Yeah. I got you. So I'll give you a, a little example. So I work for a private fleet, and we haul our own product, okay? Mm -hmm. We haul our own product out to grocery store distribution centers all over the country. I generally backhaul 
things that we need for our factory, mm-hmm. or I haul something else for you know manufacturers in the in the Cleveland area back that need cold transportation, right? Mm-hmm. The past month, I've been running broker freight because our business has been down with the COVID thing. Um, the people that we do business with, the restaurant industry uh, and the, the food service sector and the grocery industry, our business went down 90%. So we had to think about how do we keep wheels turning and keep money coming in the company. They put four of us out on the market and started hauling broker freight. So I spent a month, I didn't touch a single one of my company's loads. I hauled broker freight. How did that? Right. How, how, I'm in a small. I'm in a small company. So you think 25 drivers here, and four of us went out on the market. How how how's working with how's the? How's that happening? How? Well, what I was going to say is how how is it when every small company like that throws four trucks out there mm-hmm. that aren't normally in the market? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I saw a Maverick truck a couple of weeks ago, no joke. I seen a Maverick truck hauling an extra lease reefer trailer. Mm. Right? You got flatbed guys renting trailers to come into the reefer game because the reefer game is always strong. Crazy, right? Yeah. And how- I was having to shift what I did. How? How's- you know, I'm hauling our loads now, but... It was it was crazy for a few weeks. How 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 was it working with working with the brokers? And what I what I mean by that because I uh, a lot of the freight a lot of the freight that 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 my company move is broker freight. And I mean we we had to download Micropoint, we had to download this and download that, and then I had the brokers calling my phone like every five minutes. Every 10 minutes, are you there yet? Are you there yet? Are you there yet? What time are you going to get there? Have, have, you, have you experienced anything like that with, <laughs> with, uh, with, with the brokers doing a little bit of time that you oh, was yeah. pulling for them? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, you know, I've I hauled broker freight before. It wasn't a big deal. That's one of the reasons they put me out on the market. You know, I've got – I have all my endorsements, so I can haul, you know, bulk liquids and, and stuff like that that's Right, so mm-hmm. they put me out on there because I'm the most useful, and that's another lesson for students: get all your endorsements. But uh, yeah, I mean the brokers give me the same kind of business that they give everybody else. Hey, we need you to download our app so we can track you. You know, okay, or they'll they'll make the phone call, and, and you know, I two stories of just the past couple of the past few weeks where I had a broker call me. On Friday, and they knew I was going to leave the. Well, they knew I was going to go on my thirty four, and I was going to be on my reset. I was going to be at home, and I said, "Hey, please, I'm going to let you know now. This is where it's parked. It's in our yard. It's it's safe and secure. It's locked. I've got it plugged into a jack, so the reefer stays running. Please don't call me on my thirty four. And you know what they did? They called me on my thirty (laughs) four. And you know, I just answered the phone. I was like, "Hey, yeah, it's all it's all good, but please don't call me again." And they said, okay, we're sorry. And then I had another guy. Uh, I, I picked up a load of Coke out from uh, north of Milwaukee to backhaul to get me back here to uh Cleveland area to go down to the, the Coke plant down there by the Blimp Base in Akron. Mm-hmm. And uh, I looked at the time schedule the day I got the dispatch, which was like four days before the load was due, and I told them. I say, hey, I need you to call the receiver. I said, I'm not going to be able to make that time. The way that I'm running the clock right now, I'm going to have to take a break here. Then I'm going to have to go through the time zone. I will be there at 11 a.m., and they wanted it there at 6. Okay. And uh, they were like, oh, okay, I will, you know, it's not that big a deal. I said, no, I'm telling you. I said, it's not going to be there on time. And I pride myself on being on time. Told them four days in advance. You know, they called me the day before. Hey, is that load going to be there? And I said, no, sir. I said, I, I, it'll be there about 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Well, it's supposed to be there at 6. And I said, yeah, I know that. I said, but I told you. Sometimes you just can't get. <laughs> I can only drive this many miles a day, sir. Exactly. And, exactly. And they, they didn't get it. Well, 
you know, 6 o'clock a.m. on the dot, <laughs> my phone rings. Hey, where's that load at? And I was like, uh, right now, <laughs> Indianapolis. <laughs> Because, well, you're supposed to be here. And I said, didn't I tell you yesterday I wasn't going to be there? Exactly. Well, yeah, but I didn't think you were serious. I said, well, you got a tracker you, you, on my phone. You, you got to be serious, and that's what you the tracker on the phone. At. Right, right. Now, I, I, I used to I hate, I I used said, to hate you, that. What time is it going to be there? He says, what time is it going to be there? I said, probably right about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I used it to hate that. Depends on if I hit traffic going through here. And sure enough, at 11 a.m., my phone rings. Who's that low dust? It'll be there in four and a half minutes. I said, I'm pulling down the road right now. I tell you, And then man. I got in there, and you know what happened? You know, and I told him four days ahead of time. I said, I'm a professional, sir. I know what I'm doing. Crazy, right? You know. Crazy. But, uh, and I pulled in there, and you know what they didn't do for me? Page they the didn't change the appointment like I asked. So you so, so you ended up getting there like, as oh, a work great. in. Here's so, my six o'clock, and you know what I did? I had to sit for five hours. Yeah, they they put you in as a work in. I I know that feeling. Yeah, we'll we'll I, work in. Yeah, I I, I, you know. I know that feeling, man. And I and that's but you know what. But when you call in, when you call to tell them, when you tell them, you 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 tell them like, yo, I am going to be late. I'm not going to make the the uh the original appointment time, and I need you to change it. And then when you get there. Thinking that it's going to change it, you know, you, you know, you, you, you can't get mad at the, at the receiver. You can only no. get mad at the, you can only get mad at the broker or the dispatcher who dispatched the load that was supposed to tell them that you was going to be, you know, late and you need to reschedule. That happened too many. Yeah. That happens way too many times. That when I get there, yeah, it happens to a lot of drivers. Yeah, it happens way too many times that when when we get there, we we end up being work ins and not even and not even getting the detention pay because that's it because you guys were supposed to change the appointment time. Now I'm I'm asked out because of what you know the brokers and the dispatchers failed to yeah. do. I will I will say this though I am blessed to work with some of the best ladies I have ever worked with in our dispatch center, and I don't have that problem where I work. And if I call them and say, "Hey, I noticed this was on the schedule. Can you bump it for me?" They work their absolute best to make that happen because they know I'm reliable, and they know if I if I'm calling them, they know I need it moved. That's what's up, man. Well, you know, you know how many times I've been late in my four years? How many times? That one coke load. <laughs> <laughs> that one coke load that I told him was gonna be late. <laughs> I got, I gotta, I gotta admit, I, I gotta admit, my, 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 my favorite. Uh, you know, you got to, you, you, you got to. Um, I, I always said this. I always said this. If you have a good rapport with your fleet manager, things at that company is going to go great. I always said that, and I will stand 100% behind that. If you get with a company and, and you and that fleet manager have a good rapport, I got to admit my, my, my fleet manager was awesome. You know what I'm saying? My fleet manager was awesome. But what I do want to tell you guys this. Now, I know what I haven't told you guys is what I'm about to tell you right now. Don't get comfortable. Do not get comfortable. And, one, and, what, no, and, never. And, and this is why I said this. You get comfortable, shit will happen. Excuse my language. It will happen. When you start getting comfortable, shit will happen. All right. So if you have a good rapport with your fleet manager, you have a good rapport with that company. Don't get comfortable. Work it like you just started. Don't get comfortable. Don't 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 start putting your feet up. Don't start like don't don't start like getting lassadaisio. Don't don't start getting uh 
Nostar, uh, nostalgic, no, lethargic, or whatever, whatever you call that. Lethargic. Go, yeah. le, lethargic. Thank you. Don't don't start getting that. Don't don't start don't start thinking that you 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 that driver that shit don't happen to you. All right. Don't get comfortable. That's my advice. Do not get comfortable. If you like that company and you want to stay with a company, don't get comfortable. Work that company like it's the it's 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 when you first started. When you first started. That's that's how you're gonna to have to continue. That's that, that's gonna be a success. In my this is just my opinion, and this is my advice. But this is this is how that success is going to work out for you in the long run. Don't get comfortable. Now, if you and your fleet manager and you and your company got that got that camaraderie going on and y'all missing and everything, when you get comfortable, that's when the shit start going backwards, and then that's when little shit start happening. You don't want that. You you don't want that. Well. Chris, man, I, I want to thank can I, you. Can I add something to that? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Man, so just, you know, I've been doing this a couple years. You've been doing this a couple years. Mm -hmm. Man, every time I get a dispatch, I still pull out my atlas. I still route plan, even though I know where I'm going sometimes. You know, I treat this truck like it's mine, even though it ain't. I'm blessed to have that job. You know, we, people that are coming in the industry, we're we're just about in a, a bulletproof industry. Even though it's slow, mm -hmm. none of us stopped. And if you go into that company and you treat that truck with respect and you treat that company with respect and you, you hustle and you keep learning and you don't get comfortable, you're going to be successful. And people are going to see that and you're going to develop a good reputation. Exactly. You know, that's... I just wanted to throw that on top of what you were saying because that was excellent advice that you give. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, Chris, man, I, I want to thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Um, You know, don't be no stranger. Definitely. Are you still there? Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Oh, okay. 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 I thought I lost you there. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want you to be no stranger or nothing like that. Um, other than uh, well, yeah, you, you can still you you can still uh, uh, pump out your YouTube. Tell tell the people where they can find you at, bro. Um, the YouTube channel is called On the Road with Chaplin Screech. That's S K R E E E C H. It's got three E's and I earned all three of them. Long story, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's On the Road with Chaplin Screech. Uh, I do a new video every wednesday sometimes more frequently than that but definitely every wednesday um it's just a place to glorify god just have a good little positive positive place to to be on youtube so. okay all right well that's what's up and if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me like my man chris here all you have to do is reach out to me you can reach out to me with the phone number 216-600-2090 text me I might not answer the phone if you call, but if you text me, I will respond. You can get at me at the Gmail, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com, or you can head over to Instagram where all the you know where all the all the other stuff is at. You can get at me over there and DM me in the uh Instagram at lockoutmen. And I appreciate all you guys watching. I appreciate all you guys listening. Um don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more content like this, especially if you like it. Make sure you share it. My man, uh, Chris, over here, give him another round of applause. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. And on that note, we are gone. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, bro. That was awesome.